Okay, now we're going to move on to uh, exposure units and the different types of light sources that are out there. Um, I briefly gave you a tour of the dark room and kind of pointed out some of the exposure units, but I just want to go a little bit more uh, in depth with the, the different types that are available. Um, yes, you can use the sunlight. The sunlight is probably a very good resource for UV. Uh, problem is that we're not always guaranteed that it's going to be nice and sunny. Not everybody lives in Arizona like I do, um, but um, but you can use the sun. Um, some of the most popular entry-level light sources that people use out there are, can range anything from uh, quartz uh, to blue fluorescent tubes to fluorescent tubes. Uh, one thing to know about these type of light sources is that the, the white fluorescent tubes, for one, uh, they do not produce adequate UV uh, to harden the emulsion, in which the emulsion, that's what it needs. It needs UV to harden. So you have to be very careful in selecting your light source and very important that you select the, the correct light source for more efficiency in your shop. Um, so the white ones I would probably stay away from. Uh, the next one is a quartz. The quartz lights, I mean, everybody likes to go to Home Depot or one of the hardware stores and pick up a quartz light and use that to save money. Well, just like the fluorescent light, the quartz light, the quartz light is in the same boat. Um, we as human beings use these lights every day and um, they're not able to produce UV and to keep us safe. So those are the two light sources I would really stay away from, even though people do recommend them and they say they work. And yes, they do. They just take a lot longer because they don't have uh, enough UV. So those two light sources I would really stay away from. Um, if you're looking for a very economical entry-level light source, uh, one of the ones I would recommend, um, still not my favorite, but it, it still works good, and uh, it's probably going to be a lot faster than the other two light sources, would be a blue fluorescent light source. Okay, I'm going to turn this on real quick just to show you what that looks like. Okay, it's kind of bluish, purplish uh, in tone. And uh, this light source will produce more UV, maybe three times more UV than a regular white fluorescent, uh, fluorescent tube or a quartz tube. Um, but for the price, this is a very good entry level. Uh, but what you are going to see is that when you get into higher quality, images, um, this is not going to be your best light source. Okay, this is for real simple entry-level screen printing. Uh, once you get into more advanced screen printing, you're going to want to use um, another light source that I'm going to point out right now. But before I point that one out, I also want to talk to you about uh, another light source that's out there. It's called the Mercury Vapor Light Source. The Mercury Vapor Light Source um, is not very commonly used, but it's out there. So they pop up every once in a while. Um, some people are still using them. I really don't recommend them. Um, my personal favorite and what everybody in the standard in the industry is, uh, is what, what's right over here, and that is the metal halide. Uh, this one here is made by Newark, and um, I believe this one here is about uh, 3,000 watts. Um, could be a 1,200 or 3,000 watt unit. I'm not too sure. No, this is a 3,000 watt unit. Okay, so this is a very powerful metal halide light source. Um, if you go from a blue fluorescent to a metal halide, um, you're probably going to cut your exposure time in five. So again, time is money. Um, spend a little extra money for a better light source and more efficient production in your shop. Once again, I'd like to um, just uh, emphasize that this is a brief uh, overview uh, as an introduction to the pre-press area of screen printing and uh, hope to uh, have more instructional videos that will uh, touch uh, areas that you of interest and um, can help you succeed in the future and uh, grow your business. Well, it's been a long day, and uh, in conclusion, I'd just like to uh, touch really quick on everything that we learned today um, and kind of give you some more ideas of uh, what you can do to help yourself uh, in the future and make it a little bit easier. Uh, we learned about graphics and one thing I didn't touch in, in the video and I'd like to touch real quick right now is that on the graphics side, um, don't make it more difficult than what it is and try to go out and learn as much as you can about the softwares that are out there, Photoshop, Corel, Illustrator. Uh, there's plenty of help within the industry we have a lot of guys that have a lot of knowledge that you can 
uh, go to them and ask them for help. Um, they've gone as far as uh, making um, books and also clip art for you. And th that's one of the topics that we didn't touch earlier. And uh, really quick, I just kind of want to show you some of the uh, books. Um, one of them is uh, from Great Dane Graphics. You know, he uh, has two books out right now. One is for uh, Photoshop, you know, how to create artwork in Photoshop. And uh, this is a very, very good book. Um, you can use it as a reference. Um, you can go back to whatever page in case you forget something. Um, me, personally, I'm actually going to get this book um, only because I do not have, I have a very basic knowledge on, on graphics, and I'm actually going to go out and learn some more myself. And this is a really good one for Photoshop. He also makes one for um, Corel. And um, actually, I had them backwards. Um, the blue one is for Corel. The red one is for Photoshop. Okay, so, you know, you got guys like uh, Dane Graphics out there uh, working really hard to help uh, everybody be successful in design. Um, we also have companies like Smart Design. Um, and uh, they basically create uh, different type of uh, clip arts. So they make it very easy. So you don't have to go out and design them yourself. Um, Smart Designs, uh, they go out and uh, they do all this for you. You can open it. You can change it. You, you, know, you can do pretty much anything that you see out there now uh, that's been screen printed. And um, they have, you definitely need to go to their website. Um, it's smartdesigns.com and take a look at everything they have to offer if you're looking, if you're an entry level graphic designer and uh, want more options. So I thought I'd kind of touch on that. Um, we went over printing film positives and I uh, showed you guys earlier. Um, basically, you know, this is what the film positives look afterwards from the designs that we printed. And um, after you print them, you take them out to the press, showed you about the mesh. We talked about the mesh, the emulsion. Um, and there's nothing better than getting the final result of the print. And um, here's a good example of the final print um, of the design that we did um, today and we used as a sample. So I didn't go into detail about printing and everything else. It's just, again, a very brief overview of pre-press and uh, what's involved in it. Um, once again, I, I'd like to, uh, you know, conclude with a thank you and uh, appreciate your time, and uh, we'll see you next time.